turn to page 268. 268, how firm a foundation. Once you have that, if you'd like to stand, you may, you don't have to. <clears throat> I will open up in a word of prayer. Uh, Father, we thank you again for this day. We thank you for each and every one that's here. We ask now, the Lord, for your blessings. We ask that you allow the Spirit of God to have free reign in our hearts and our minds and change us for eternity's sake. Help us to focus on the words of God, words of the hymns, and that uh, all we do, say, and, and think here tonight would be uh, pleasing to you. We thank you again in Jesus' name. Amen. How firm a foundation, 268. 268. had to get up early in the morning to go fishing and there was a program and that would be the song they sang opening so I'd hear that song every morning just about some mornings I'd get up earlier and some I'd get up later but most mornings <clears throat> 414 am I a soldier of the cross <clears throat> Bye. 
Sunday will be the potluck Sunday. It's also Thanksgiving Sunday, so do keep that in mind. 
We will have that after the service. We'll have no evening service. All right. If you would go ahead and um, open your Bibles up to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. We had uh, just gotten into verse 5, and the Bible said, uh, says, For this they willingly are ignorant of. We talked about them being willingly ignorant. And it says that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the, the earth standing out of the water and in the water. And I, I'm going to get to that in a minute. And I just want to, um, you know, willingly ignorant we had, we had spoke about, and I'm not going to labor that too much. They were... Um, they were willingly, willingly ignorant of what the world is. You know, there's a lot of people of that today. Um, I think especially in our day and age of the flat earthers. Um, I'm, I'm really, I, I don't know how to handle that, that they believe the earth is flat again. Uh, you know, it went from flat. You've not heard this? This is a pretty big movement now. People believe the earth is flat again. It's a big movement. With all the science and everything we have, and the Bible says He sits upon the circle of the earth. You know, if you got all this stuff, and, and, but they, how do you how do you take people in the 19th century and you travel them back to the 15th and get those beliefs revived again? I don't know, but you know, it, honestly, it's it's probably going back further than that with the witchcraft and things that we have today. That's becoming more and more prevalent. It's more humanistic. It's more hedonism. But we're seeing a lot of that. But yeah, this is this is the thing. So, to me, I don't understand it. You know, I've got a curious mind. I like to analyze things. I like to look at them. I like to, to, I like to get all the information I can get, and then I store it. You know, I may use it, I may not. Dr. Bond always said, he said, get what you can, can what you get, and use what you can. <clears throat> so, I've been canning ever since. <clears throat> I, taught, I was taught that when I was young, too. We canned tomatoes and beans and all that other stuff. You know, I would imagine these people here probably knew this story of, of, of the heavens of old and the earth and, and all that by the, the Torah, by, by their uh, uh, oral, not only, but all their teachings. I imagine they knew. You know, this is a Jewish uh, background. If not, uh, Gentiles would have had access to that as well. So I, I, don't, I don't understand it. It's, it's like they openly rejected it, willfully ignorant, they didn't want it. Um, they don't want to call it to mind. They don't want to choose to believe. They reject the truth. Um, you know, <clears throat> when I was thinking of this, how many of you heard of Hugo? When, what year was that? 89, 1989. We were in South Carolina in a garage. I made one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made in my life in that garage. Um, my wife laughs because it's kind of funny. But anyway, I'll tell you the story. Maybe if she looks kindly upon me, um, <clears throat> I might go ahead and tell the rest. But we were, we were living in South Carolina. They had forecast Hugo to come along. Hugo, if you understand, from the eye of the storm, out was 300 miles. So this was a 600-mile storm. <clears throat> so this was a Category 4. Hits, and there's these people that decide they're going to have a hurricane party. <clears throat> so they own Folly Beach, I think it was. Maybe been Isle of Palms. So the, they ordered evacuation. You're supposed to leave. I mean, I left. We're, 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 what, 50 miles inland? We left, you know. Well, wait a minute. We didn't leave. No, no. Different place. Yeah, we did leave our house. <clears throat> we should have left the whole area. But anyway, um, so they were told to evacuate, and then they scoffed and mocked at the authorities. The police come to them and tried to, to kind of act like they could make them, but they really couldn't. And, and so um, there was no laws for that. And so they were, on, I remember the interview with them on camera. They laughed at the, the people and said they were going to party. It wasn't going to be as bad as what everybody thought. They'd be there, you know, come on by if you had time later. And <clears throat> that's the last you ever saw of them. When Hugo hit, hit, it took the house and everything. The people never been heard of again. They mocked the people that knew. And, and, and they paid the price. We're full of a day of mockers. We're full of, of people today that are willingly ignorant. You know, uh, <clears throat> you have the truth. You know, Barbara said something in a really a misreply to her, or it didn't take up what she said. I was talking about 
they won't be willing, willingly ignorant so they don't have accountability. Well, the moment God give his word and give it to all men, they had accountability. Uh, and that's what Barbara was driving at. And I missed that and I didn't pick up on it. I should have. Um, <clears throat> they're accountable. God has given it to us. If they don't know it, then it's their fault. The Bible is the most uh, popular uh, book, the most printed book of all time. And it's out there in every language. If they, Well, I say every language. Maybe not every language, but uh, in most languages. And if a person wants to know, God will, God will feed them what they need to know. He'll make sure they know. The problem is they don't want to know. They, they, they have no desire to know. So said they were ignorant of that by the word of God the heavens were of old. That God had created the earth. It was by him speaking. And that's a marvelous thing. Uh, these people would rather take the words of men than they would the words of God. And yet God by his voice, by his speaking, it wasn't an act of his hands. They, they do use it figuratively. If you look in, in parts of the Hebrew and say it out, it kind of gives you the idea of him crafting. But he crafted it with, actually I think with his thought. He brought it into existence. And they mock this man, uh, this being, that by him brought into earth and the heavens and all that there is. And, and I don't believe we really understand. You know, we, we think. We like to, to boast that we know God. We like to boast we have a relationship with God. Now, I think it's good to have one. Don't get me wrong. But I think for all eternity, God's going to unfold and show us more and more and more. And it's going to be just a fantastic time for those who have trusted Christ to learn and actually get to know him more and more. Um, and really, you need to start in this life. You don't need to wait to eternity. There is so much God can... Uh, show you or reveal to you now that you've never thought of as you read the word of God as you walk with God and as you uh, repent of sins and try to keep your relationship right and reading through and God brings things out oh I never thought of that God spoke to my heart on that and so yes <clears throat> now <clears throat> Peter writes here um, in verse 5 it says uh, the earth standing out of the water and in the water and in my opinion, Peter, when he wrote that, was referencing the original creation. Now, I don't mind saying there are uh, several different views on this, several different takes. But as I look at it and think about it, um, I, I kind of want to go that, that Peter understood uh, there was a firmament. Um, and, and, and God, uh, you know, in his original creation, uh, the way he made it, that in the water and out of the water... Um, I'll get to the other one in a minute. I want to dwell on this verse, and like I say, we'll get into the other thought and the other ideas there. But because this is not seen today, we don't see the firmament. People think, well, it never was. You know, it, it never was. This, it's always been like this. There's a lot of things you don't see today. There's a lot of things they have not uh, been able to have the intelligence to know because God has not revealed it to them, and yet they still are. Um, you remember who it was that discovered gravity? And you remember why he discovered it? Yeah. Supposedly an apple fell and hit him in the head. And uh, was that the first time gravity was in action? They didn't know, you know. Um, I found out about electricity when I was a young boy playing with light bulbs on a tree. And one of the light bulbs broke. <laughs> and from that day forward, I figured out I didn't like electricity. If I can't see it, I don't want to deal with it. And I don't. I call an electrician. I do my, well, one time or twice I might have done something, but I try not to get it. I says if anything can bite me like that and I can't see it, I got no defense. So I didn't want anything to do with it. So they don't want to believe these things. They think things continue the, the way they are, but they don't. I mentioned I thought they, they were small-minded. I want to go on now to verse 6 and, um, and talk about uh, that. It says, whereby the, the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. And we talked about the, I think that when we go to verse 4, I mean, excuse me, 5, when it says the earth standing out in, of the water and in the world, water, I think that was pretty much the first rebuttal by, by Peter of the scoffers. Um, is there or was there a world existing with water before what you had now? Was there ferment? Yes, there was. You see, they didn't see that. And, and they're saying that everything, you know, 
Where's the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, that's four, all things continue as they were. No, they don't. They never have, never will. Things are constantly changing. By God's word was the creation of the first, and then by His word was that harmony dispelled. It says, whereby the world then that then was being overflowed with water perished. These people fail to, to recognize a very significant truth. And I think we in here today would understand it, but I don't think a lot of people in the world do. They don't understand that every breath they take, everything uh, that keeps them alive, even the ability of your body to assume or assimilate food is by an act of God. It's, it's just not something that happens. Well, you know, uh, you hear people say, well, it just happened that way. It was just coincidence. It, I was lucky. I don't believe that. I may use the term, but it's, it's not the concept I believe. I believe God is active in the affairs of men. Um, now, I'm going I'm to jump a little bit. Before I do, I'll, I'll just say this. Um, the the argument is is one things change and, and it's not like it always has been and two um, God changed it that's the argument the world that was then being overflowed with water perished so he puts that out um, as I said before there is some debate by what what Paul Peter was saying it seems to me uh, there is the two points first uh, is the one I said about the 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 standing in and out of the water. Before I go any further, I'm just going to say this. This is a point of great apologetics. People love to take both sides and argue. Honestly, it's about like the, the widths that we talked about with Samson. Uh, some would say this and some would say that. You can only get so much. You can't know absolutes um, uh, on those things. There's just some things God did not labor out to tell us all. Well, this is one of those things. So it could have mean... And I like to believe it meant the firmament above and the waters below. But it could just as well have meant the earth had waters covering part of the earth and parts of it stuck out of the water. You know, honestly, you could go either way. And, and so that's not the big deal, is it? That's not the point he's laboring, is it? What's he laboring? What's Peter driving at? No, sir. There was creation and then these things happened. Well, you know, you could actually argue that point. You actually could. Um, but I think the argument here is those people are saying things never change. Now, you could look at it, okay, well, it was the firmament above. You know, you had those waters above and you had the waters on the earth. Or you had waters, you know, uh, that was covering land. You had water, you had land that was outside. You know, that really doesn't matter. The argument is, Things do not stay the change. They don't stay the same. They change. Only God's immutable. And so he's putting these things forth. It really doesn't matter either way on that. But what it does matter is you're being held by God. God's in control, not man. It doesn't, the license plate says you can believe in, you know, no, that's not what it says. Hold on. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. That's a lie. God said it, it's settled. I don't have to believe it. You can believe whatever you want. It doesn't change the truth. It doesn't change the fact. Um, so I think we look at this and thinking about it. Now you correct me if I'm wrong. These people here, they're, they're argumentative. Where is the promise of his coming? You know, they're, they're in unbelief. Uh, people like that, they're going to argue about anything, aren't they? They're literally going to argue about anything. When I look at this and I think about what they're saying, and I think of, and I've told you this before, they're talking about their lifetime and possibly their parents' lifetime. Well, in the scheme of things, that's nothing. At best, 200 years. And they're basing their knowledge and their decisions on that. When you have the, the eternal being, God, you know, he sent them a man to tell them the truth and they wouldn't accept it. They're foolish. They're, they're taking their little bit. It's like my little experience with that light bulb. And I want to tell you all about electricity. Trust me. I don't know anything, but it bites. Well, I do know two things. I didn't see it. 
But you understand what I'm saying. And, and that's about what they're doing. They don't have anything. Um, they're prideful people. Honestly, when I think of this and I think about what's being said here, I think these people couldn't be happy with anything. You think about it. Kind of like the Pharisees. Yeah. Show us a sign after Jesus healed. <laughs> after all that he's done. All the yeah. And, and yet one more. These, these people, you, you're not going to make them happy. They're prideful. And, and what's the interesting thing about prideful people? There's one thing that always stands out to me about a prideful person. There are a law unto themselves. Can't tell me nothing. I already know it. I mean, you can't correct me because I already know. No, no, you're wrong on that. Be, be very careful. But that's what I see with them. They're law unto themselves. They fail to take into account there is a final judgment. There is a creator who's created. And they will one day stand before him at his judgment seat. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, could, you know. And that sentence right there tells me flood. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what you're saying, I fully agree. Six is talking about the flood. The rest of it, is it actually the flood or is it the beginning of the creation? I couldn't hook it together. I really couldn't. I'll ex- I have, I'm not going to argue any of those points, but we know there, when it says being overflowed with water and perished, there's no, no question, that's flood. Because it didn't happen before. Um, and I want to get into that in just a second. Um, you know, we talk about these people, they don't, they don't recognize God as the final judge, the creator. They don't believe that one day they'll stand before his judgment seat to be judged for their, their deeds in the flesh. Um, but he will pass the final judgment. And if they don't humble themselves and accept Christ as Savior, that's, that's what they're going to face, the judgment of God. Um, praise the Lord that he did send Jesus Christ to die. And praise the Lord that, that at least, for, you know, I'm looking at myself that, that there come a time that I realized that I was a sinner and I accepted what he did. And I, you know, praise the Lord that, that I had that opportunity. Um, and, and, and I know that if you're saved, you're the same way. But if these scoffers don't humble themselves before God, one day he will humble them. You know, they will, they will, every head will bow and every knee will bend, right? And what a day that will be. Um, it says, whereby the world that then was, um, uh, there was a balance in the world before uh, at that time. The world stood in and out, but that changed. What changed? What changed? What brought about the flood? What? The sins? I agree. But their sins changed, caused what to happen? And, and I'm full of agreement with you. I'm going to try to drive you down a lane. Maybe I should say lead you, put your drives. Because of our. But, yes, because, because we, the men sin. Because the sin had gotten so great, God changed the natural order of things. God supernatural. No longer did the, the, the water hold back. He broke open the windows of the deep. He changed. And His will was not. But what I'm trying to express is, God's will before the flood was that the water stayed in their place. But when men sinned and He decided to judge, his will change, and for those waters now to flood out, it was by him. It's an act of God. It, that's what I'm driving. It's not just happened. So it just well, this is just something that that come to. No, God's will is what changed, and and, and it was because of the sins of men, because of their evil and their wickedness. Um, how many of you think God's an active force in our lives? I'm a firm believer of it, and and you know the more the more I look around um, and see the way things are happening, the more I I keep my eyes open into my own life and those that that, that I'm dealing with, or witnessing to. Um, I'm convinced more and more uh, God is, and you know that He's active in lives, and that and to me that's a wondrous thing that God is working in each and every one of those lives simultaneously. 
you know, affecting. What you do is not isolated to you. What you do is not isolated to you. What I do is not isolated to me. It's, it's all inner. And God knows the workings and all that sophistication. And he uses it to bring about his glory. What a, th- what a, what a magnificent thing. Um, uh, I wanted to, to talk about this flood for a second. Because I did, um, I did look at, I went and looked up some stuff on, the, on this flood. Because there's some things that was tickling the back of my mind. And I just wanted to bring this out tonight. I went and looked on, um, let's see, I'll give you the name of the place. It is called, I don't see the name. I know I got it right here. It's um, Research in Creation or For Creation. Say again. That's it. Thank you. I, it's in here wrote somewhere. I just can't find it right now. But John, John D. Morris um, wrote this article. And he, he titled it, Why Does Nearly Every Culture Have a Tradition of a Global Flood? And, and, and that was my question. I said, my question was, how global is the knowledge of the flood? Or is there a global knowledge of it? And um, he wrote this. He said, one of the strongest evidences for the global flood, which annihilated all people on earth, except for Noah and his family, has been the ubiquitous, ambiguous presence of flood legends in the folk- folklore of people groups from around the world. And the stories are all so similar. Local geography, cultural aspects may be present, but they all seem to be telling the same story. Over the years, I have collected more than 200 of these stories, originally reported by various missionaries, anthropologists, and ethnologists. While the differences are not always trivial, meaning some of them are, are pretty big differences, the common essence of the stories is instructive as compiled below. Listen to this now. He's got 14 points. Is there a favored family? 88% of the stories say yes. Were they forewarned? 66% of the stories say yes. Is the flood due to the wickedness of man? 66% of the stories say yes. Um, is cat- You have to give me a second. My tongue's tied. Catastrophe, only a flood. 95% said yes. Was, it glo- was, flood, was the flood global? 95% yes. Is survival due to a boat? 70% yes. Were animals also saved? 67% yes. Were, uh, did animals play any part? I guess that's just a separate question. 73% said yes. Did survivors land on a mountain? 57% yes. Was the geography local? 82% yes. Were birds sent out? 35% yes. Was the rainbow mentioned? That's where it starts dropping. 7%. Did survivors offer a sacrifice? 13%. Were specifically eight persons saved, 9%. So if you take away, literally, the last uh, three points, you have 11 points that are over 50%. And if you knock off, excuse me, 10 points over 50%, if you knock off the 35% and the 57%, you have nine points that are 66% or better. And ingredients, and I thought that was fascinating. So there is there is evidence globally for a flood, but here's the thing: the the Bible gives the most detailed account that we have. All these other ones will vary, but not only that, but your but your anthropologists, and this is what I kind of get a little kick out of. They will tell you that, um, well, you know, it's it's really. Uh, it has other things that caused it. They, in other words, they don't credit God with it. It's always something else. They always fabricate something. Um, that's that will for ignorance, by the way. The evidence is there. Um, the anthropologists will also tell you that usually myths have a seed of, 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 
or of truth. It's, a, it's usually a faded uh, memory of a real event, somehow distanced. I think that's where you have um, our dinosaurs. I think, you know, it doesn't have dinosaurs in the Bible. You have, you don't, you have dragons. I think that's your dinosaurs. You know, I think that's what they call them. So anyway, I'll leave that alone because um, I could be, um, I could travel a goat trailer or something. But anyway, oh, here it is. It's in this, it's, um, uh, yeah, icr.org, yeah. So, you know, I find it interesting that, that, this was something that was so widespread. There was such knowledge of it. It had to have been knowledge of it that day. But even though they wouldn't have had communication with all those people. But yet you have a group of people that would deny it. They would deny the things of God. They would deny the workings of God. Is that any different from today? It's not. Sadly, it's not. Um, I was just talking to somebody... Um, a couple of days ago, I don't remember who it was, and I, and I mentioned some things, and, and I was watching their face, and it was like, "You're one of them." <laughs> yeah, I'm one of them. You know, the world just what you believe, you believe by faith. You believe by the faith in the Son of God. He, because you have the indwelling Spirit, you're able, they don't have all that. They don't see what we see. We see by faith. Um, so I do find it very interesting. What, whereby the world that was then was being overflowed with water perished. Again, this is another illustration. You should tell them things have changed. They're not the same. They're, they're, their argument is, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue. Yeah, maybe since their fathers, maybe since their grandfathers. But all things have not stayed the same. And he's stressing that. Um, so you go on to seven. It says, but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of the ungodly men. So we have, again, the argument is uh, the heavens. Um, what is one of the, the biggest mistakes? Well, I won't say biggest. What are the mistakes of the scoffers? What are they failing to take into account? It's the same thing they do today, by the way. You, know, you look out that door, and you have two people walk through the window and look out, and they see Mother Nature. One of them says, praise the Lord for His beauty. The other one says, look at Mother Nature and what she does. Mother Earth. Gaia, yeah. And um, I don't know if you've caught this. This is just a free one. Um, I just read uh, some news that uh, uh, the big organizations, the big uh, industry now, is pushing that in their in their programming, in their advertisements and stuff, Mother Earth and stuff, and taking God completely out of it. What a shame! What a shame! I hope God uh, brings them out of the business. And this is quick. I hope He bankrupts them. Well, I'm afraid I'll never embrace it. Yes, ma'am. Say again. They're saying the universe instead of praising God. They praise the creation, not the creator. That's right. Yeah. You know, we live in an interesting time. Um, and I have stressed this, and, and I'll keep on hammering this horse. He's not dead yet. Um, we need to be preparing. Uh, we're in a time now where you think it's bad. It's not bad yet. You read the Bible, you know, you go to the end, end book and begin to read and everything that's happening. It's going to get a lot worse. And if you don't have a good relationship with God, if you have not stabilized and established a relationship according to the Word of God, there's going to be a lot of things that happen. You can very easily falter and fall. You can very easily be crushed by the things. Your strength is not in your body. It's not in your mind. Your strength is in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're going to make it through... The tribulation, and, and I'm not talking about the great tribulation. Please don't get it. But I'm talking about the tribulations and trials we have in this life, persecution we face. If you're going to make it through that, you're going to make it through by the strength and the power of God. You're not going to make it through on your own. You know, um, Some people tend to deny that. 
Um, but it said the, the, the heavens and the earth which now are by the same word are kept in store, reserved under fire against the day of judgment. I went through the Bible and I looked up a few verses. You don't have to turn there, I'll read them. I, 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 my thought was it was by his word, his power. It is by God alone that, that this has come about, the creation. Uh, he created it and, and, and with that in mind as the great creator, I believe God has all right to do as he sees fit. I don't think any man has the right to stand up and tell God or try to tell God what he can do or not. I think he has total power. Uh, he has all rights to make, destroy, what he, or, 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 or to, to keep, continue what he's created or to cease in that creation. Uh, and, I, and my question uh, at the end of that statement would always be, who is man that he thinks he has the right to stand in the face of God and, and, and say uh, these things that he says, especially this. Uh, so anyway, uh, our, for Psalms 19.1 says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that we can walk out there when there's not clouds in the sky. Um, maybe a little bit fewer days here than some places. But we can look up and we can see these stars and they're, they're being held there by God in his power. And we can just praise the Lord for that. Um, Psalms 97, 6, it says, The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. God's creation reveals his glory. I love to learn things about nature. Please forgive me for using that word. Do not throw books or rocks or shoot, but you understand when I walk out and I see what God has created, I, I look at this, and, and the more I learn about it, I learn about, I, I've told you this before, how the trees and plants draw water. Do you all remember what I told you? The, 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 they have cell structures in these leaves, and as the sun is on those cell structures and the wind is blowing, it, it evaporates. And as that evaporation takes place in those little tiny cells in those leaves, it creates a vacuum. That vacuum creates a draw on the stem, which creates a draw on the branch, which creates a draw on the, the, the trunk. And then that trunk creates a draw in the ground that goes onto the roots, and then it draws from the ground. And it goes up and fills. You know, I, um, I watch my plants sometimes, and all the leaves are just wilted and hanging down. They, they're actually evaporating quicker in the hot sun than they can draw. And then you pull them out of that sun for a couple hours and they're right back ready again. God did that. Mm -hmm. That is just a marvelous creation. Mm -hmm. That those, the things work, that your body, I mean everything that, can I talk about wood for a minute? <laughs> you get there and plane that wood off. And you, you, you expose those grains in, in, in oak wood. I, I've never seen it in, in some of the other woods. But there's things called rays. And they, they go through and they're, 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 they're brighter looking and, and they're, they're just shining the light. And I don't know the reason. I know there's something. I know God created it, but I, I can't explain it. Nobody could explain it to me. But it's the beauty that it brings out. I'll show you sometime when you get a piece of wood that has it in there. Uh, and, and oat will have it. Um, but, yeah. The way the grains run is that you, you can go with the grain or against the grain. You know that, right? Pick up splinters against. Anyway. He's telling these people. And, and let me just add a little. You're foolish. Why don't you just look up and see the glory of God? You just look around. These people that rebuke and say there is no God, just look around. You know? Everything that he's created, just just screams of his glory and, and I'll never get over the fact that everything here he created for us he went through the whole creation and he put us on this and rested for us that we might survive so tremendous um, uh, Is uh, Isaiah 49.15 and, and uh, before it's not the same line of thought a little different line of thought I was thinking about God has always been active in His creation with His creatures. And, and the thought come to my mind, there is nothing that God has created He does not love and care for. And Isaiah 49, 15 says, Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, they may forget, but yet I will not forget. 
God will not forget about us. Matthew 10, 30 and 31. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear you therefore, fear you not therefore, for you are more valuable than many sparrows. Psalm 65, 9. Thou visited the earth and waterest it. Thou greatly uh, enriched it with the river of God, which is full of water. Thou preparest them corn. Who do you think the them is? <laughs> it's us. It's the animals. It's his creation. When thou hast so provided for it. Psalms 121, 1 through 8. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even forevermore. God watches over us. These people that are saying this are the greatest fools there ever will be because we have a God and He loves them just as much as He loves us. But yet they have willfully denied the great God that loves them. What a shame, what a shame. And I'll just back that up with a, a, a one other verse here. Um, you ought to know this in Matthew 5, 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from my law till all be fulfilled. That is the assurance that God will always take care of us and watch over us. What a blessing. Now, you want to hear the warning? Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. All the lost and too many of those who have saved, who have trusted in Christ, are neither watching nor working. Most people are waiting. We need to be preparing. Not waiting for His return, but preparing for all eternity. And we'll be with Him. Any, any questions or a little bit different um, lesson, but any questions? Anything you want to add? Uh, Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to say the word nature is mentioned in the Bible. <laughs> You're okay. Thank you. Nature you Even the teacher needs to be taught. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Don't call mother. <laughs> no, no, I don't. Yeah. It's a shame what we what we uh, have today in our in, th- in places that they call themselves churches and people. Uh, from people that, that say they serve God and are Christians, it is, it is a shame. You know, so. Anything else before we shut down? All right, Vera, you can cut it off.